uh, welcome to my presentation, Showing Not Telling, Assigning Students Screencasting Assignments. I am Dr. Melanie Gagich, a senior college lecturer in the Department of English, um, and I specifically uh, am an instructor in the first year writing program. So to begin, I wanted to talk about what is screencasting. So according to Techopedia, a screencast Screencast is a digital video recording of a user's screen or desktop complete with real-time or post-edited narration. So what you're watching right now is an example of a screencast video. Uh, common programs include Zoom, Panopto, Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, there are many more of those, but those are the four that I am most familiar with. Um, so uh, historically, screen recordings have been used for recording lectures, so therefore they are very teacher-centered. So, for instance, um, screencasting has often been used in flipped learning classrooms um, because it offers instructors the opportunity to create content for students to watch before class time. Uh, also, many instructors might choose to use screencasting when teaching asynchronous classes so that students can understand difficult concepts. And then lastly, more instructor instructors probably became more comfortable with this tool over the course of the pandemic and might have continued to use it as a tool um, up until now. So one of the things I wanted to start with was just talking about this idea that even though uh, screen recording has often been very teacher-centered, I think that is great. And I think it's a really useful tool for that. So I use it in my asynchronous cl classes. Um, it's a great way to support a flipped classroom. However, in this presentation, I'm also arguing that uh, instructors should consider integrating screencasting assignments for students to create. Um, and I will provide a variety of different ways that uh, we might be able to do that. So as we move towards student-centered learning, um, there is the opportunity to promote digital literacy skills. So when asking students to um, create a screencast video, um, students are going to learn how to use the software, potentially edit their work, and eventually submit it. So all of these tasks strengthen their digital literacy skills. Secondly, uh, creating a screencasting video is also asking students to create a multimodal text um, or a text that moved beyond just writing or just an essay. So for example, a screencasting video might include a presentation similar to what I'm doing now. Uh, it could have interactive components, they could add music, they could add images, all sorts of things um, to make it a little bit less essay-like and more interactive and more multimodal. Um, and studies in writing studies have also found that students find multimodal assignments really engaging, which is a great thing. Um, and then also, and perhaps most obviously, integrating a screencasting assignment where the student is a speaker and the creator uh, centers the learner and provides agency for the student. They can decide what they want to present on, how they want to present it, and which tools to use, which is a great opportunity for students. Okay, so one of the first ways that I think screencasting assignments can be useful is to have them illustrate and uh, illustrate the writing process and revisions. So potential assignments might ask students to record as they write, uh, maybe as they edit, or even add citations. So this was actually my inspiration for my first screencasting assignment that I created in fall 2021. I integrated it into all of my English 100 and 101 sections. Um, I did it in fall and in spring 2022. Um, and essentially, the assignment asks students to engage in the writing process, uh, and specifically the last step, which is editing. Um, in the past, I found that students often skip this step once they complete their essay because they just want to turn it in. So I was searching for ways for to motivate students to complete them. So as such, I created this assignment, which you can see on the right. Um, and I'm basically asking students to um, show me what they revised, how they revised, and show them editing and rereading their essays on the night that the essay is due. Uh, the assignment is worth a small percentage of their grade, and it did not need to be fancy. Uh, so essentially, they could just show me what they were doing rather than writing it, and it should be about two to five minutes in length. So again, just narration and their screens is all that was required. So this is a screencast or a screenshot showing um, a student as they're screencasting. And in this uh, image, you can see that they're using the version history of Google Docs to demonstrate the revisions over time. I also have a video here um, of a student uh, screencast actually showing and going through some of their editing that they did. So I just want to show this clip briefly. So this is about halfway through as the student is thinking about some MLA issues. Tonight is over down here with the work cited. In MLA, uh, I realized, is you have to have the larger number for the page numbers, the larger number first, followed by the small number, and the for repeated page, uh, for repeated, uh, 
the first repeated number is omitted for the page numbers. So in this case, it's um, it's 473 to 466. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, the student was going through and just showing some MLA editing that he wanted to show me. Um, I did not teach that. That was something that the student did on their own. Um, and it was just something that as they were finishing up their essay that they wanted to go back and double check. So again, this illustrates the way that um, this editing screencasting assignment can really give students the opportunity to look over their work. Um, I also surveyed my students informally uh, in spring 2022. Uh, after they had completed their first revision uh, video after their first major project. So there were a lot of positive responses in English 100, 102, and English 102, my asynchronous web course. Uh, there were only six negative responses overall, and then six unsure or unconnected responses. Some of the things that students really found uh, that they liked about the assignment was that they felt it was helpful, uh, that it helped them revise their work. They really liked it because they felt that they could show off their efforts, um, and also they would say that it supported their understanding, so really trying to understand the writing process. Some negative responses included that it was just one extra thing um, that they added to their plate that they weren't always fans of. Um, some of them said it didn't change the revising ha habits at all. And then some of them just felt a little uncomfortable with recording themselves and speaking. And then lastly, for the unsure qualitative responses, many of them would just say that they weren't sure how they felt about it, which is also fine. So uh, overall, uh, I think that these responses were pretty positive, but I also understand that not everybody is teaching writing. So the next few slides review some potential ways to incorporate this activity into a variety of learning environments. So I think one of the key affordances of this type assignment is that it allows students to show and not tell. So this might be especially useful when asking students to complete complex problems. That way they can actually show their work as they complete the task. Uh, further, I've actually started asking my English 102 students to record themselves finding academic research through library databases and Google Scholar as a way to ensure that they're engaging with the research and to provide teaching moments so if I see a lot of students making the same mistake, such as not changing keywords or giving up too soon, then I can address that during class time. So whether you're asking students to complete complex problems or you're asking them to conduct some sort of research, um, screencasting um, videos can really be helpful for students in that context. Also, screencasting assignments can support collaboration, so students could work together to make videos that review a concept, maybe something that's difficult in the class, or they could also work together to create a how-to for others in the class so that others can watch and learn from them. So again, this also supports a flipped learning classroom. Students could, or you could, add their work to the um, LMS that you're using, so the learning management system. Um, and then lastly, it also promotes student-centered learning. So I touched upon this at the beginning of the presentation, but it really uh, helps students uh, learn about their various things that they're learning in your class because it allows them to make class content. So it gives them agency, and also I think one of the best ways to learn is to be the teacher, right? So creating this content allows them to take on this teacherly role. Um, it also provides a space for creativity, which is all, always a good thing. And then also, I think that these types of assignments offer potential to reflect on their learning, which can also increase transfer. So related to that, I have one last example of what I've used in my classes. So this is the final assignment in English 100 and 101. Uh, so the students are being asked to reflect on their learning over the course of the semester and uh, on their growth as a writer and on their revision strategies. So in fall 2021, I decided to get students to choose whether they wanted to write an essay or a video. So the videos allowed students to show what they had learned. Uh, so you'll see in the right hand corner, uh, this is just a portion of my assignment sheet. And in red, it gives a little bit of specifics. So I'm asking students to use specific examples from the essays their revision videos, any in-class writing that they've done, and then they should be using all of that to support their argument or their experience of writing, learning, and revising over the course of the semester. So in order to sort of show how this works, I have a short video or a piece of a video uh, from one of my students. So here we have um, the evidence showing pro the Project 3 rubric, and it just shows the combination of all the skills we learned throughout the course. It says right here, drawing from Project 1 into learning outcomes. And then over here we have the evidence just showing how my drafting always has like a lot of filler words and such, and that I end up removing them. 
so this student continued uh, working on uh, their reflection and talking about various ways that they grew over the semester and using uh, the screencasting to really show me uh, how they felt that they reached those course learning outcomes. So your learning outcomes might be different than mine, but again, if it's something that you're interested in doing, allowing students to show what they've learned um, can really be helpful. Um, so in terms of introducing this to the class to help them, um, I always take a little bit of class time to introduce it. So just some basic steps. I have them go to Screencast-O-Matic, create an account. They can download it to their computer. Um, I let them know that sometimes it doesn't always work and they are welcome to choose whatever program that works best for them. Um, and then I just ask them to actually um, play with the technology in class and create a really short screencasting video. So what you see in the right here is a little chart that says Gagich's practice. Students would then write their name underneath and hyperlink to their screencast. Um, and I'm asking them to title it and then just sort of show something for five to 10 seconds, just so that I know that you or that the student is able to use the program. So of course, all of this, um, there are some other considerations as well. So there are some challenges with integrating a screencasting video assignment for students. I think the biggest challenge is that it takes time to watch and grade. So one way that I've sort of gotten around this is making them completion based. So making them basically low stakes, as long as they do them, then they basically get credit for them. Uh, the content also should be accurate, especially if you are uh, going to add it to your course LMS. Um, you don't want students sharing inaccurate information. So you might want to offer a one on one conference. But again, that sort of goes back to the time issue. So you might not have time uh, to do those one on one conferences. Another challenge is teaching the students how to use the tool. So I went over briefly what I do in class before I assign this assignment. Um, but again, it takes up some class time. And then lastly, students may feel uncomfortable. Um, but one of the ways that I've sort of counteracted that is to allow them to not include their faces, they can alter their voices. And I guess they could even just use a uh, transcribed text as well and no narration whatsoever. Um, overall, I do not have the solution to the issue of time, but I do really enjoy watching my students' videos. While I may not watch every single second of their video, especially if it's a lower stake assignment like the revision videos, um, I do watch it and then I'm able to give them points based off of it, and students often get really excited about it. So I do think that the um, potential outweighs the challenges. Okay, and then I would like to end by going over um, Screencast-O-Matic, which is my uh, screencasting tool of choice. So please watch this short video uh, to go over Screencast-O-Matic. Okay, so this is the homepage of Screencast-O-Matic. Um, so as you can see, you can record for free. However, you can only record for 15 minutes, which 15 minutes, which can be a bit problematic um, if you want longer videos. However, for students, it shouldn't really matter that much. At least it doesn't matter in my class. Also, they now have a new edit for free uh, component, which is pretty cool. Okay, so students can sign in. And then once they sign in, they can go to my content. And so their content will be empty, but as you will see momentarily, uh, I have a lot more videos. <laughs> uh, so I have 117 videos. Um, and basically in order to create the video, I just show students that they need to launch the recorder. Um, once they do that, usually it will say download and then they can just click download. But if they already have it installed, then you'll see that this uh, black and white rectangle will show up and then they can choose to either do screen, webcam, or both. And so I just asked students to do a practice video about five to ten seconds. So you just hit re record and then there is a countdown. And then I generally just ask students to show me that they can use this particular um, tool. So, okay. So uh, you can finish watching uh, the rest of the video, but basically that goes over briefly how to use Screencast-O-Matic. And I just want to thank you for watching my presentation. Have a lovely day.